Could a community be too beautiful for its own good? Find out what happens when thousands of people flock to a tiny alpine mountain village in Austria. You're listening to Travel FOMO, a podcast for people self-diagnosed with wanderlust. Welcome to the Travel FOMO podcast. I am Hillary Halton and I am here with my husband who has been backpacking the world with me, <laughs> Jamin. Going everywhere. That's right. You're kind of the reason that we went to Hallstatt. Uh, yeah, I found it and thought it would be a place that we would like. Yeah, and I know. I'm so glad that you did. I was right. Yeah, I'm so glad that you did. Um, I didn't even know about Hallstatt. Um, it's in Austria. It's tiny guys this little place is so tiny but it's so beautiful it's got about 750 residents and it's known for um, a lot of people believe that it is the inspiration for the movie frozen um so it gets a lot of visitors big for that reason it gets actually 10,000 visitors every single day that's insane that's so crazy especially if you only have 750 people that live there Right. You just think about like all of the, all of that influx of people daily. Yeah. That's crazy. It's so crazy. Um, it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. You guys hear us say that over and over again. We didn't actually seek them out, but we did start to find that all of our favorite places we were going to just happened to be protected like that. They were World Heritage Sites, yeah. which meant, you know, they're going to stay um, historically accurate. Like they are, you know, so. Yeah, that wasn't like, that wasn't a criteria when we started, but it, it might be now. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. Now we like seek it out. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, the other day we were in Phoenix and we were trying to decide what to do. And one of the options was to go to a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it trumped the others. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's how we picked. So yeah, yeah, it's a big deal for us now. (laughs) It is. So Hallstatt is part of a larger region. Um, I'm going to butcher this, but it's the Hallstatt, Dockstein, uh, Dockstein, Dockstein, uh, Salzkammergut region, (laughs) which basically, (laughs) all right, basically it is, um, a couple different villages, Hallstatt, Obertron, which is where we stayed, Mm -hmm. uh, Gosal and Bad Goizern. I think I said that right. Um, I'm probably butchering this, guys. So just grace, please. <laughs> Have some grace. Um, Hallstatt is so loved that there's actually a replica of this village that was built in China. Yeah. And we were kind of not surprised, knowing that, not surprised to see that there were actually a ton of Asian travelers that were traveling through while we were there, um, mm-hmm. which was just kind of interesting considering a lot of other places we went, we didn't see that. Right. It it was so interesting that it it's such a big shift from because we had just been in the Czech Republic. Yeah. At Chesky Crumb Love, um, which we loved. If you haven't heard those those episodes, go back and listen to them. But to think that you could just do one day's train travel and be in a place so different. Yeah, true. It's kind of kind of mind boggling. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and we like when we showed up. Actually, we there was a little confusion. We were like, we're going to Hallstatt, and then we realized, like, oh wait, no, are we going to Hallstatt, or are where are we going? Where are we staying? <laughs> yes, because Hallstatt is so small, um, it was hard to find accommodation there, yeah. and it the high demand for it also makes it a little expensive. So finding a place within our budget was a little tough. And we actually booked a hotel room in Obertron. Yeah. Which is the the village next door. Across like, the lake. Yeah, just across the lake. Um, and is super easy to access Hallstatt from Obertron. So it wasn't a big deal. And we, it actually meant that we just get off the train at one different stop than the one we were on. <laughs> but right. Like, but at it, first we were like a little shaken because we were like, oh, wait, we're on a train headed to Hallstatt. And that's not our location. Right. That that's headed, that's that we not where we to. need to go. And it, it was further complicated because it was another instance where the train stopped. And it was like, you have to get off the train and get on a bus. Yeah. And we just experienced that trying to get to uh, get around in Czechia. Yes. And so it was another kind of like shake you up and and make you kind of second guess yourself situation. And this one ended up 
we were delayed. And so then you're kind of wondering, okay, well, how do I, how do I keep track of, of my stops and where I go, yeah. which you could follow along on the, on the URL app. You could kind of see the different stops that yes. there would be. But now when your timetable is really off, it really kind of just throws it all and it makes the information a lot harder to consume yeah. than in a place like like Great Britain where every train is exactly on time and you're like, oh, yep, it all matches up here. It it was just in the wind. Yeah. It was one of our most beautiful tr- um, bus rides, though. Like For once sure. they like took us off the train and put us on a bus. Mm-hmm. And that was another instance where we're like sitting on a bus and everybody leaves and we're like, uh, but we knew enough at this point. We were like, wait a second. <laughs> yeah. Everybody got off the bus. And we're kind of looking around and we're ready and we start packing up our stuff. And then the train uh, conductor comes through and or or somebody, a guard or something, somebody came through and was like, you have to get off. You have to go get on this bus. And we were the last people to get on the bus. Yes. And it (laughs) it is crazy because those announcements come through in a different language. and So you don't catch them. And the train stops and everyone like is off the train and to the bus and that means that you get like the last two seats. Mm-hmm. And for us, you know, we're carrying our bags. So we have backpacks and then we also have like personal bags with our computers and things like that in them. So packing up everything is a bit of a, a bit of an ordeal, especially when you're not expecting it. Yes. And so when you get on a train, you usually kind of get everything situated and then you just hang out and you know, like, well, right before I get to my destination, I'll kind of gather everything. And so these like, fire drills you're like throwing everything together and you end up getting on the bus getting like the last two seats on the bus and you're like holding your bag because there's no place for it to go yeah it just is sort of a nightmare but it was a really really beautiful bus ride oh my gosh it was so beautiful i think that might have been the most beautiful bus ride yeah uh, yeah, I, I'm trying to remember the different bus rides that we took, but it was incredible because we're coming into all of these lakes, like because we're we'll be staying on a lake. Hallstatt is on a lake. Everything's like revolves around these lakes, and we start like the bus starts taking us through these tunnels, and you would like pop out of a tunnel, and you would see the most amazing view of a lake, and then you'd hop back into the tunnel inside a mountain, and then you'd come back out and see more of these lakes, and people were like. Um, they were sailing on mm-hmm. the lakes. Yeah. They were just riding around in boats. They were paddle boarding. All kinds of activity was happening out on these lakes. And I was like, I've got to get out. Let me off the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited. <laughs> it was beautiful. It made me want to go to some of those um, lakes that we, we passed for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Every single one was just, just amazing. And I remember like, I think we were on opposite sides. If I remember yeah, right. Yeah, we didn't get to sit beside each other. Yeah, because we were the last ones on the bus. But I remember like looking out my window and thinking like, oh man, like Hillary is missing all of this. And then like looking at, over at you and you're like staring out your window because it's just as beautiful Aww. like on the other side too. And it was, it was so pretty cool. incredible. Yeah. Was and awesome. makes you like views like that. And experiences like that just make you forget any notion of being tired or worn out or any of that stuff. Yeah. It's just like you're just instantly energized with, I have to explore this place. Yeah. Oh, I love that. You you mentioned that about another place too. And I totally agree. You start seeing a place. You mentioned that about Luxembourg City. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As soon as we, we saw it by train, we were like, let me out. I've I I'm alive now. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I mean, the views kept getting better too, because sure. when we arrived in Obatron, it was like a dream. And I always love to talk about this. Like just, we got off at this train station. It was another one of the smallest train stations in the world. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. we were like, Oh my goodness. Like these are just tracks. There's just train tracks basically. Mm. And they just stopped in the middle of these train tracks. And there might've been a little building there, but it was pretty small yeah and um my jaw like hit the floor like I was honestly kind of like holding my breath like forgetting to breathe because I was just so blown away by the views all around us and um 
we like had to walk to our hotel mm-hmm. and um so and it wasn't far at all which is no. awesome um and we had all of these views like all of and it was very much a village where people lived like obertron was very much like there are people that have homes here yeah. and i remember even seeing one um home where they had like dug into the ground and created a river kind of ran past if i'm remembering this correctly it was a tiny little stream that came down past where somebody lived and they had dug out um a large rectangle in the middle kind of so the stream ran through i hope i'm remembering this correctly the stream ran through this rectangle and Mm -hmm. it became a pool yeah and they had their own little pool that was basically (laughs) and 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 it was built out really nice like it was really nice but this natural spring would run through the middle of their their small pool Mm -hmm. that was brilliant in my opinion but (laughs) just everything seeing people like living there was like so fun and um when we got to the hotel, the old there's this older Austrian man. He's sitting behind the desk, and he was like so kind. And yeah. you know, we just kind of walk up, and it's called the hotel was Hotel Haas M C, uh, which I believe means house on the lake. Mm-hmm. And um, and he said hello, and you know, we were back into the <laughs> we were into the country where everyone says hello, hello, and I was like, I in high school learned had had a couple of years of german didn't learn nearly as much as i should have but i have enjoyed german ever since yeah. and so it was so fun to be like oh my gosh i know some of the things that people are like saying and um we had a tiny little room there but we had a fabulous view of the lake oh yeah oh my goodness and you could like look straight towards hallstatt the little village across the lake and it felt like we were the only people in the hotel like it did it was super quiet it was so quiet um i i think it was probably like their shoulder season it wasn't quite summer right and um but when you sat there on our balcony there's super steep mountains jumping up on both sides of the lake so you're looking right at the lake you're right on top of it and on either side of the lake every angle is just like these really steep mountains all around you and um it was very lush and green everywhere the lake was super calm um and i don't know like it just, I, I, I just loved it. That I keep thinking about that view is what I think about. Because that's yeah. also, I think it was that night that the fog rolled in really thick. Mm-hmm. And the clouds were coming into the mountains and coming down onto the water. Yeah. And so, like, you could see, like, lake, clouds, mountains mm-hmm. on top. <laughs> and, um, and just kind of creating these levels. And, um, it was, it was pretty, pretty special. It was actually a really special day for us because it was around the time of Hollis's fifth birthday. Yeah. And we were walking around and, um, we saw swans like instantly, like immediately. Mm-hmm. And Hollis, if for you guys who haven't, um, maybe don't know our history, if you've been listening, you you know about Hollis, but um, she was our, our daughter and um, we had her in May of 2017 and um, had really been looking forward to her arrival. We had her room all decked out in swans. Yeah. And so swans are really special for us for that reason. Um, But Hollis was, um, real shortly after she was born, was diagnosed with a a genetic disorder um, that was really severe in her. And, um, And some kids live she was not one of those kids and um she died after six days and um ever since then swans have meant so much to us Mm -hmm. and this was really really special because like i remember looking down and we're crossing over like tiny little we're on sidewalks and crossing over tiny little brooks and and bridges and We're walking over this, and I'm talking about a tiny little brook that might have been three to feet wide, three to five feet wide. Mm -hmm. And we're walking over it, and I look down, and a swan is passing underneath us on this tiny little stream that wasn't very big, and just like gliding right underneath us and um and then that same swan ended up um right in front of our hotel balcony. Yeah. And um it was really it was really really precious and um we were just kind of out walking around we'd 
gone to a pizzeria mm. nearby, um, which was like a pizzeria slash bowling alley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, with like only two lanes to bowl on. <laughs> right. It was really cute. But, um, but man, that was really special. It was really sweet. Yeah. I remember being there and, you know, looking ahead at, at the calendar, like that time of year, you always... You know, her birthday is a really significant day, and mm-hmm. but you look forward and you see what's going to be going on that day, what's going to be happening, and knowing that we were going to be there, you knew it would be special and, and that we'd be able to think of her, but then to have those swans and that, that one in particular be there just brings her memory so to the forefront Yeah, and was really cool, a, a great way to to spend that day Mm -hmm. because it can either be a really, really hard day, which sometimes it is. And there, you know, there are sections of, of the days that, that can be like that, or it can be a really sweet memory where you can be really thankful for, for her and, and her memory and what she meant to us. And I've, I've felt that way there that it was a really thankful day and, and just a, a sweet memory of her. Yeah, for sure. When you're planning a trip, what are the tools you use? Have you ever thought about a better way? To plan more efficiently, to save money, optimize time? We all have some kind of limits on our resources, time, money, energy. Let's find a way to make the most of them. Let's find a way to help each other take the best possible memories with us when we head home from our journey. If your product does that, let's get together and share it here. The next day, we got up to actually go see Hallstatt, and we walked over to the city, which um, I think it was about a mile away, if I remember right. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Yeah, so an easy walk. Um, it was paved the whole way, and you, you're just kind of walking along the lake, <laughs> so you can't complain about that. It's, it's beautiful, and uh, we saw the city, just a, a really cool little village built under the hill. There's a salt mine there that, that you can go tour, and that's kind of how it the village got its start was through salt. And why it was so wealthy is because of, of how valuable salt was for a long time. We didn't actually go tour the, the salt mine, but that is something that you can do while you're there. But we just walked around the city. I think we had some breakfast. We stopped and got some pastries and stuff. And walked by we saw a church and there's a little cemetery kind of built into the side of the hill that overlooked the lake that was really pretty and i remember there the cemetery there were so many flowers that it seemed like such a such a joyful place yeah you know some cemeteries can be really kind of dark and ominous and this one just felt very very um, I don't know. Alive seems like a strange word, but yeah. because of all the flowers and stuff, it it just seemed like a very joyful place of memory for the people that were that were buried there. Yeah, very much like a place where um, you would want to be buried. Yeah, like people is like a place that people frequent. It felt very cared for and taken mm-hmm. care of and loved very well by the living. Yeah. Which is like not how you would normally describe a cemetery. Right. Yeah. 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 When, and that was that was so cool. And the, the village itself is so beautiful. There's a massive waterfall that is kind of yeah. like right in the middle of town. Yeah. So you're standing at the town square and you hear and see this waterfall like it's just kind of blows your mind. But we walked around, took a lot of pictures, and then we were actually headed back to Obertron like right after lunch. And you can take a ferry. They have these old wooden boats that uh, this, you know, ferry company uses to run people back and forth. And they only fit around 10 or 15 people. It so happened that no one else was there. And so it was just us. Yeah. So it was just the two of us on this old wooden boat. And the captain of the boat was this super nice guy. We talked to a little bit. I think he only ended up charging us like the like the child's price <laughs> for the tickets, which was really, really kind of him. Um, but he told us that the captains there, like they build the boats themselves. And so he had actually helped build that boat. We go across the lake and it's just 
as still as could be. Mm -hmm. And there's Hallstock kind of behind you, Obertron in front of you. There's a small castle like on the side of the hill and the weather was perfect. Yeah. And we just got to spend this kind of half hour leisurely boat ride. Yeah. From one city to the other. And I just remember sitting there and feeling really lucky in that moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just feeling like this is this is why we come to places like this. Yeah. It's for moments like this where you just get to sit and take it in. And like you described, it's this lake. And so you have like this flat feature of the lake of being completely calm and still and flat. And then immediately at the edges of the lake, there's these little villages and then these huge dramatic mountains Yeah, that go up. And it's just such a, a naturally beautiful place. Yeah. And you kind of wonder how... Does anyone ever leave here? Well, yeah. And you understand exactly why that uh, captain of our boat, why he did end up there. Yeah. Because he like, he was so interesting Mm -hmm. because he was like um, from Slovenia uh, originally. Yeah. He spoke like seven to eight languages. (laughs) Right. Which is, he's like, well, I really only speak five now. And I'm like, oh, well. <laughs> yeah, well but at one point five. in my life, yeah, I spoke <laughs> seven or eight languages. And he lives up in the mountains. Um, he, he did talk about like it being crazy snowy during the winter. Yeah. Um, and he didn't necessarily seem like he was, um, I think the tourists are like a lot you know, right. for the community. And he yeah. was like, you could see that he was like, uh, uh, a little frustrated, but he started to soften up after a while. And pretty soon, cause we were just like, dude, this is amazing. And, mm. you know, he was kind of like, yeah, it is, isn't it? It's pretty amazing. You know? And I think, I think it helped that we were staying in Obertron. Okay. I, I think that, um, well, I think from, from his perspective, because we were there, sort of investing in the community a little bit. Like we were staying and and paying to stay in a hotel. Like we were paying to eat at the restaurants and things like that. And I think particularly a place like that gets so many people that just come in for the day and just like take a bunch of pictures and trash out the city and go. And I think when he found that we were, when he found out that we were actually staying in Obertron, I think it, kind of softened him up a little bit of like, well, maybe they're not here to just take complete advantage, but they're investing a little bit too. Oh, got it. Yeah. And, and he lived outside Obertron, I believe Mm. too. So, um, yeah, I could see that. Well, and we were, as we were kind of going across on that boat, we were about to go see all those same views up From the top, (laughs) like a totally different look down at this lake Mm because we were headed to the top of Dockstein. Yes. And um, so when we got off that boat with him, we walked over and then kind of hiked up a a trail to a cable car, um, which was like, it wasn't a horrible hike. It was like not too bad. Um, and the cable car, that is the thing about Austria and Switzerland and some of those places though, is that like, you really have to take cable cars to get to the good views Yes, because the mountains are huge. Mm -hmm. Um, and so those cable cars also, they cost a pretty penny. So they are a little expensive. You just want to budget for that. Um, it's, I would say it's worth it, but just know that, um, before you go. (laughs) Yeah, no, I, I agree. It is worth it, but it does. If you're not prepared, it's a little, it's a bit of a shock. So we took, we ended up taking two different cable cars and it cost about 70 to 75 euros, I think mm-hmm. per person. I think you're right. Yeah. It was pretty expensive, pretty pricey, but it was definitely one of the highlights for us. Um, we went up to the Five Fingers Lookout, um, which is really amazing. It's, um, it's about 20 to 30 um, minutes walk from where the cable car drops you off at the top. So you get dropped off at the top and then you start a hike and that hike, basically there's not a lot of incline to it. You're just kind of walking 
you know, along the top of the Swiss Alps, you know, but um, <laughs> or Austrian Alps. And uh, you walk along for 20 or 30 minutes and then um, you come to a platform that has like five little individual platforms kind of that stick out right. where you can get great photos without people being in your way, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Brilliant. It's so brilliant. Yeah. Um, and so there's even like a picture frame like you can use for your photos where you kind of are inside the picture frame with like this amazing view in the picture. And so it's, uh, it's kind of fun. It's just a good Instagram spot. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was amazed at how much snow was still up there. That's right. Yeah. Just like feet and feet and feet of snow. Yeah. It was pretty chilly. Yeah, it was actually. It was like a little bit of wind, nothing crazy, but the snow was like, wow, that's, that's crazy. Um, and there were honestly a ton of great lookout points everywhere you looked mm -hmm. was just another great view. And we even on, at one point on the trail, we walked past some paragliders who were about to take off from the top of the mountain. Yeah. Either parasailers or paragliders. Mm -hmm. um, but they were about to take off and it was so breathtaking. And I was so excited for them because, you know, these people are literally just sitting on the top of the mountain and they just start running down and as they run down the mountain the wind catches in their sail and then they are able to take off and watching it happen so close like is really cool and um and in my head i kept thinking that's gonna be us in just a couple days we're paragliding in <laughs> yep. switzerland so you guys need to tune into that here in another week or two but um, yeah make yeah. sure you subscribe for when that one comes up yes so but that was just man so fun being on that mountain was just a really really awesome part i wish we'd done more hiking actually while we were in austria yeah it was it was really cool to hike around up there and see all the views and they have you know a kind of a little resort up there too that that you can actually stay in um which would be really fun to go back and do at some point but there was it was really cool to see and then we rode the cable car back down yeah and we met some people who had been at that resort that you're talking about right yeah um we are getting in line for the cable car and eventually get on the cable car and there are all these these women like, like these young women that are really tall and seem really athletic and they all have kind of matching gear on and you're kind of wondering like what's what's going on there what's your story and so eventually we just ended up talking to a couple of them and well, asking we could them, see by their gear right who they were and that's yeah. what made me I was like I have to say something to them <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we were like hey you guys all have like Olympic bags yeah like what's what's the deal and they were actually a rowing team from the Netherlands yeah and they'd been staying at that resort to train at altitude, which is kind of crazy and, and cool. Um, but we got to, to talk to them all the way down. They were super nice. And we had talked to them about um, how we had, we had just been to Amsterdam. They gave us a lot of recommendations for other places uh, to go. The other next time than that, Amsterdam. <laughs> right. The next time that, that we're in the Netherlands, but it was cool to to meet them. One of them had actually competed in the Olympics in like the previous Olympics, which was cool. And so next time the Olympics are on, the like we have to check out the rowing and see if we if we can recognize anybody. But there were um, it was fun to just meet a group like that and get to talk to them and and spend your spend your time on the way down in the funicular like getting to know people from another place yeah and they were um so gracious about like they're like where did you go in the netherlands and we're like well we only went to amsterdam and they're like don't do that again <laughs> <laughs> right. you have to go to some of these other places and they were um they're very understanding that yes of course you went to amsterdam that that is very normal but we really encourage you to go to other places and i thought that was just such um good advice yeah and um so i look forward to going back to the netherlands and taking their advice and seeing some other places um they were just they were wonderful to talk to and they were i will say very for me as a girl like woman to woman i was like i am scared of you 
<laughs> like you are very intimidating because you are so tall, like way taller than even Jamin and like yeah. any other men in the room. Mm-hmm. Um, and everyone was looking at them and their bags because it was really obvious like these girls are from the Netherlands right. and they're from the Olympics. Yeah. And so the question was, you know, what kind of Olympians are you? And we were the ones to talk to them and like, you know, find out their story and stuff. And they were so eager to talk to us. All of them, as soon as one started talking to us, they all wanted to like talk to us and they were super uh, forthcoming with like what it's like to row in the Olympics or to train. And um, anyway, it was, it was just really special. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It was was really cool. that'll always kind of stand out from our time in there of like getting to getting to have that conversation with them. Yeah. And then that night we had like a great dinner on at this restaurant on the lake. Mm -hmm, Um, and, uh, yeah. And then the next day we had to head out nice and early, but, um, it was, you know, some of the things that surprised me is that like, it was a lot warmer there than I expected. It was like, like I remember being on that lake in Hallstatt and yeah. thinking like it's pretty warm like yeah it's a nice day like mm-hmm. I can wear a t-shirt oh and I have some other note you guys this is so this is a creepy little note that I made but like <laughs> there are there were not really very many flies at all like bugs like a fly yeah mm-hmm. there were not many at all just a couple but they were huge they were so big like big dark black we would call them horse flies growing up so creepy (laughs) and i like i just made a note of it because i was like that's crazy to me like i love that there's not a lot of flies but the fact that they're like as big as my thumb is really scary (laughs) so those are just random remarks but was there anything like surprising for you like just about being there in Hallstatt, you know, you look at these pictures, you watch videos and you do research, but then when you actually show up, it's, it's always different. Yeah. I think I was surprised at just how beautiful the Austrian Alps were. Mm -hmm. I think I, I expected like Hallstatt, the city itself to be really cool and look beautiful on the lake and all that. But I think just being surrounded by those mountains and in that, in that setting, yeah. Whereas even if you had taken like the little village of Hallstatt away and it was just like Obertron and those mountains, it still would have been an amazing stop. True. It For sure. Just kind of blew me away how, how beautiful those mountains were. I know. They kind of like overshadow the villages themselves. Yeah. Where you're just kind of like, okay, like I thought the village would be the highlight, mm-hmm. but it wasn't. Right. It was this amazing nature like it's like god's hand you know that was the more powerful part of it yeah it was it was really beautiful i i was so glad that we booked the hotel that we did with like the balcony overlooking the lake getting to see that in at night and in the morning and during the day it was just mind-blowing to to watch like to watch the fog roll in yeah to see how flat And still the lake would be and how dramatic the mountains were. Like it was beautiful. It was beautiful. You guys, you should definitely go check out our video Mm -hmm. on Hallstatt because you will hear all about, you'll see, you know, everything that we're talking to you about. And, um, you can also see some of that stuff on, um, all the social media platforms. We're on Instagram and TikTok. Another great way to dialogue with us is to, when you watch the YouTube video, you can comment. Yeah. And that's a really great way to dialogue with us about, um, about the different episodes. Episodes. We would love to know one if you've been, and two, you know, what did you think of it? Did it, um, was it, you know, smaller, quieter than you thought? Was it like more fantastic? Were you equally shocked by the Alps as we were? We would love to hear from you guys. We are up. Let's see. Up next, we are staying in Austria. Yeah. For a couple more nights, mm-hmm. and we are going to spend those evenings in Innsbruck which is another new place. Neither one of us knew, did not know much about it. Um, But uh, we will take you there in the next episode. Yep. A lot of good stories from Innsbruck. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Yes. So many good stories. Let's see. Um, I fall out of the shower and Mm -hmm. nearly die. (laughs) 
<laughs> um, it rained on us really hard. Oh, we showed up and we didn't know um, how to get food for the longest time, which yeah. is like really hilarious. <laughs> uh, I ended up going out to the Crystal Garden um, just outside of Innsbruck, the Swar- Swarovski uh, Crystal Garden. And that is pretty magical. <laughs> so you guys, um, you definitely want to tune in next week and hear just the funny stories more than anything (laughs) but um until then live life really fully because life is short guys wonder well 